business mode grinding and things like that. Yeah. So I guess we're gonna get to the contents. Which you wanna get first? Let's start off with the um, I think the record label. Okay. You know, that whole situation will yes, be a sir. great place to start since that's kind of you know, real, real that's a lot there that we're gonna deal with. But you know, we're gonna definitely um play that audio for the people. Y'all gonna enjoy stuff like this because people we're kind of like this kind of our lane right here and going into things like this. So y'all gonna enjoy this one. We definitely enjoy doing stuff like this, and we were doing our pre-production, John, what we usually do before we get on on a microphone and do our thing. And you were talking about just the hyper hyper sexualization and in particular our females at hip hop and how that was kind of bothersome to you. Of course, as a man, we enjoy right. watching and, and and enjoying the beauty of a female. But at some points it's like, damn, when are we going to be taken seriously? And I was like, ah, I got to show you something, though, guys. So this was I think his name was Michael Smith talking mm -hmm. about the music industry and exposing it like never before. Oh, God, a mouthful, man. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Smith. I'm, I wish I had a little more on the, the gentleman that was speaking. but That's all I got right now. Michael Smith. The music industry's plan to hypersexualize and criminalize the black community. What's your thoughts on that, man? I want to take people back to um see Dolores Tucker. You know, Philadelphia native was a uh, civil rights activist. You know, back in the <clears throat> excuse me, early 90s, she was like one of the only people that would fight, you know, what I mean, against like what she called, you know, sleazy pornographic lyrics. She was against gangster rap and stuff like that because of how it portrayed black people now when you talk about jewish people they got anti-defamation leagues and things like that all other people like you're not going to be able to um you know paint their people in a certain way like that without some type of backlash even the guy on there he talks about when rick ross said this about date rape you had the people who deal with that michael vick with the dog situation you got people you know who are going to deal with that if they had songs about about killing dogs it wouldn't go the only thing, and I agree with him here, is when hip hop that they allow is things that denigrate the black race. You know what I mean? Whether it's uh, you yeah, make the stallion, and I hate to throw people's names in there, but her, you know, doing what she's doing, that sexual image, the Cardi B's, the drug dealer rappers, now the drug user rappers, you know, all these people out there, it seems like, and then it, it even like throws it more in your face because it's like everybody's rapping about the same thing so it's like it's right there for you just to listen to and if you well, we began to break down these lyrics and just brought them in and, and talk about them as opposed to listening them onto a beat we'd be like yo this shit is garbage mm -hmm. not only is it garbage like this will lead you know um people to do all types of crazy shit who don't have the role models who don't have the influence who don't have the fathers in their household and they're looking up to these crazy ass rappers as they role models, and we see, I can, I can give you an example, and I hate to do it, but Juice World and Future and people being, you know, um, influenced by the people in Texas and the people down south that were drinking a purple drink and the rappers that was influenced, the Little Wayne. So now people coming up that's dying, that's being influenced by these rappers. And you would think that the rappers, it's, it's a three, it's more than three way street, but it's, it's, it's a lot of blame to go around the rappers' messages. But just to go right to the top, the labels, you would think that the labels would say, all right, nah, we ain't, you know, we ain't going to be contributing to the opioid academic by having this artist promote activists or promote, you know, these different companies. Because at the end of the day, people know that the top lean company was activists. It was supposed to be banned, but it's still out there Easily. and they see it. So it's just like the fix is in. Another thing I'll talk about, if I'll let you go, Sam, I'll man, do your thing, bro. Um, Juice World's girlfriend was talking about it. Um, a particular article where she said that, you know, at the time when Juice World was getting real hot, there were labels that were bidding, you know, for him. And they would have pretty much gave him any, you know, thing that he wanted, including drugs, to earn his business. And I'll find that excerpt in a minute to uh, read it. But, yeah, what do you think about this? Well, jumping off and piggybacking off of what you just said, I, it reminds me of something that somebody we're going to talk about later on in the show. Russell Simmons, one well, a lot of his interviews when he first got signed to Def Jam or when he first got into Def Jam or I forgot how it got set up with label because I believe he started Def Jam. But right. he asked for I think he went overseas and they asked him what he wanted. He said cocaine and pussy and it was sitting right there wow. for him at the Clare Airport ready. And it was just like, man, they invite you into this world where they'll give you whatever you want, do whatever you want, just as long as you do whatever they want. And what they want usually is to denigrate and disrespect 
black culture point right. blank period right all it's done is evolved they see uh the trendsetters we have in the culture we talk about it numerous numerous times on the trendsetters that we have in the culture and that's why when we wear things people buy them and when we talk mm -hmm. about things they trend and just we just know that we're walking talking trendsetters so they obviously know if these things that these certain uh, uh triggers or these certain things are being portrayed to the youth and given there it's going to spread like wildfire and they're going to do it if we talk about lean if we talk about molly if we talk about perks if we talk about effing bitches on that stuff they're going to do it yeah and it's going to go down if we talk about women kissing women and men kissing men these kids because are cool they're going to do it so they know how to do and draw certain triggers to get what they want is mass marketing at its finest with no it's nothing new it's just evolved and I'm glad that people are starting to highlight and pay more attention to it. He talked about a Rick Ross. We talked about that lyric a couple of times on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So for him to bring that up, it was like, okay, wow, that's a that's a nail in the coffin confirmation for me that it was definitely something a little higher up. Let's just put it there that shut all that down. Why was he fired because of that one line? But the all the uh, all the drug dealing and all the killing and all of this is green light all day long. He's getting or endorsement deals all day long because we know these young black boys hmm. listening to Ross is also going to buy his Reeboks. Right. But the second he say that and disrespect some of y'all is done and they cracked a whip on them. And he basically yeah. said that. Yeah. Man, took his oh, deal, man. took his deal from him with Reebok and he probably lost all types of other money shows and people who just didn't want to deal with him. That that's, that exposes a lot though. Like you say that the fact that, all right, certain things ain't going to be tolerated, but this talking about black people, them killing themselves or whatnot, we give you whatever you want, you know what I mean, for that. Now, he, one thing he also exposes is the studies, the studies that they'll do, the market research that they'll do to say, okay, so that, that even feeds your point more where it says, like, all right, we know that if future and this person talks about so-and-so and so and these drugs, or if he talked about Sprite, Coke, and Pepsi, these motherfuckers is going to buy Sprite, Coke, and Pepsi. They're going to buy lean, molly, and weed, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I should say lean, molly, and Xanax. You know what I mean? Because we are promoting it, you know what I mean, out there through our artists, and they know the effect. The problem is they don't care because it's a profit margin for them there. Let me, it's huge profit. Let me tell you how cynical Sprite is. They got Drake to get on the Sprite campaign Damn. and put rappers on it. Knowing damn. damn well, that makes perfect what they do. Come on, man. They know. Like you said, they do research like we in Jurassic Park or something. They know <laughs> exactly yeah. what kind of specimens we need to create for the masses to enjoy it and go ahead and put the money toward that you know what I mean mass hysteria and they they've done it like clockwork we are the biggest consumer in the country what how how fast does a black dollar go in and uh, a black dollar go in and out i think it's like 6 hours at this point it's crazy yeah it is crazy so they know and we got unless until we get a hold on it it's, it's going to do nothing but evolve but as we see rappers young rappers talented rappers rappers that our kids are starting to begin to love just f dropping like flies we got to start getting a handle on this because that'll be our kids sooner. What do you think, though, about the fact that he talk about? And this is a fact we know that more white people consume hip hop as far as buying the things, the merch, the albums at one point. What do you think about that aspect of him saying, all right, yeah, we understand that. But then we're not invested like crazy like that. If the black people's really living that lifestyle. We just kind of just talking about the lyrics and shit. But we still going home to our five hundred thousand dollar homes, and we ain't doing none of that shit. I think it's all. I think it's subconscious, and, and a lot of the great uh, authors in their time they would reflect on some of the subconscious uh, mind games that it's a lot up. of the things that black people play on white folk that they don't even realize, and we don't even realize. And I think that they have a, a little bit of an obsession, certain ones, with us. So they will like to listen to that. Yeah, it motivates them. <laughs> right, right, that's fact. It motivates them to listen to us kill, but it also motivates them to listen to our culture, listen to our pain, listen to our, our swag. Point. They are just compelled by it. They always have been. They always been threatened by it. And that's why, I mean, we see how history played itself out. Still don't know how and why, but we see how pl history played itself out. Um, with all that being said, I think that they just, I think it goes hand in hand. We look at them and... I don't. You, I don't know. I lost my train of thought. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. I, I mean, you, I think you hit on a real, you know, great point. They're infatuated with it. Mm -hmm. They want to watch it. Like you see those guys that, 
you be at the party and you know he ain't really got the rhythm, but he just he's a hip hop. He loves hip hop, mm-hmm. but he may not be a brother. You know, we seen those people. I've came up with them. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, my, my one of my best friends is a Pakistani dude. Right. He just loved the hip hop culture. Love had nothing culture. to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Loved the people. He even had a black girlfriend when he got over. I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, crazy. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like. It is what it is, man. I mean, um, but that, really, all cultures, man. There's some cultures that we love, like us as black people. We embrace everybody's culture. We're not mm-hmm. really haters like that. You know what I mean? Nah, and we, and, and that's probably one of the biggest faults on us. We're just so yeah. forgiving and loving, and I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't turn it back. But I, I wish that we had a couple more assholes so we could have turned this around a little bit different. Yeah, you know I mean, definitely. But definitely. it is what it is. Great discussion. Shout yeah. out to Michael Smith for going ahead, and I don't. I thought he was from a church at first, the way he was talking, but I have no idea, man. But we'll let's salute to him, yeah. You probably maybe hit us up at the, you know, um, he hears this on the podcast, or not. But speaking of some of the things that.